we have seen the trends and we have also seen the availability of variety of tools. Now let us see how ICT can be used in teaching learning process, ICT can be used for evaluation and assessment and how we can make most of it. Let us see first ICT in teaching learning. In variety of ways we can use ICT in teaching learning. Some of them are mentioned here, use of OER, blended learning, use of distributed classroom. We know that open education resources can be used for teaching learning process. Now see some of the examples here. There are museums online and they are free and there is a site museum of museums. So if you go on MOM, you will find hundreds of museum there. If you want to know about natives, you want to know about tribes, you want to know about something else. So all those museums are available there free of charge. So if we use that resource while teaching which is appropriate, which is relevant, you will have to select and take the students there or you also can tell the students to explore that with the specific objectives if you set before them. There are virtual labs available to the learners. NME ICT has also taken a big bold step in creating virtual labs and making them available to students. Labs help the students to experiment online change the parameters, change the value of variables and see the impact which is generally not possible in the physical lab. There are many restrictions there but here you can change the components, change the parameters, change the value of variables and see the effect. One example is for say Charles law. Now it talks about if you vary the t pressure, the volume will change. This experiment can be done in a class, in a physical lab with certain number of variables. There are two variables but then its value cannot be changed beyond certain things. That experiment can be set up on virtual labs and the students can definitely change the values of variables and see really what happens and then find out what is the rule, what is the law for it. It is inversely proportional, yes. But how much does it change? Does it change differently for different variables? Is it different for water? It is different for air? That can also be found out. There are wonderful tools available to learner like Google Earth. Now Google Earth allows you to go anywhere on the earth with the help of this tool. If you take one example of say rivers, Godavari is a river which originates in Maharashtra, Trambakeshwar, which travels across because it travels very long distance and goes to Andhra Pradesh. Now on its way, there are many things. If you are interested in showing the cities, if you are interested in showing the temples, if you are interested in showing the crops, you can take variables, find out on using Google Earth and you can prepare a film of 5 minutes, 10 minutes. This film can be saved as .kmz, whatever extension it has. Now the users, the teachers can prepare these films and use them as a resource in a class. I jokingly say that I have traveled to Mansarovar 1000 times, not physically but using Google Earth. This is possible, you can go there, you can see, you can take photographs, you can prepare a film and use it as a resource. It is a wonderful tool for a teacher, it is online tool, it is open tool, it is giving you free access. But using that tool you have to generate learning resource and use it in your class. Once you start using it, your students also will make use of that. Similarly, there is another tool called MapJack. Not only map, Google Maps give you the distance, it will also tell you if you want to go from here to there, how you want to travel by air or by road and it will tell you the road and how much time it takes. Mapjack goes one step ahead, gives you a facility of seeing the photographs, taking clicks and using that as a resource. As a teacher, as a trainer, you can start exploring the tools available to us which are given to us by information and communication technologies. Another wonderful and exciting tool is uh, creating 3D content. There are many platforms available, many tools available. For example, one is Second Life. You are seeing here, these are not the real things. These are created 
things and creative things means you can create labs, you can create library, you can create a university, you can create anything there using the tools in second life for example. Like second life there are many others, you can call people for meeting, you can call students for doing experiments in the lab, you can call them to the library, it is a wonderful new world and everyone has their own avatar and then they go to second life. So as you have a real life, you also have a second life. But here what you are generating is a 3D content and the 3D content is because it is real, near to real, it is not real, it is near to real, the kind of experience which you are giving to students is near to real life. But you should not overdo that. Otherwise they will forget their real life and they think their second life is the life. That should not happen. This is only to get experiences which are not possible which or which are more valuable in the second life. One of the areas is creating a distributed classroom. In our country there is a dearth of good teachers, good experts, good trainers. In order to address this problem, generally what happens? We use a television and the lecture is given. This lecture can be seen by lakhs of people, but there is no interactivity, there is only one way. But if you create a distributed classroom, students will be able to see, they can sit at different places, they can see it, but there is a process of interaction. Students can ask questions which the teacher can answer in real life. This can be done orally or this also can be done by typing the question, answering the question with the text. There are ways by which interaction mode can be brought in. We must understand that the process of learning cannot be only one way. Somebody is giving us information that cannot be called as teaching. Unless there is an interaction among teacher and student or among students and students observed or moderated by teacher, that cannot be called as learning because learning takes place, yes. But only acquiring information is not learning. We process that information, we make meaning to it then only it is called learning and that is again an individualized process. Everyone learns differently. But ICT tools help the teacher to address these problems of learning, issues of learning which are individual. There are some tools which are called social networking tools available to a teacher, a researcher, a learner and those who want to create knowledge share knowledge and use the knowledge. Let us see some of them. There are thousands of such tools available, but if we see some of them, then you will get an idea and then you will start exploring. You will start sharing even the tools with your friends and other learners. One such tool is Pinterest. The title says it is pin. So you can pin, but where you can pin? There is a board, pin board. And now if you have created a board for a particular topic, Say you want to create a topic on rivers. So on rivers, if you have a picture or if you have a presentation, if you have a video, if you have audio clips, whatever. It's not only you have. If you find something very good resource, you can pin it there also. But generally people pin whatever they have generated and they share it with others. But others also can go there and pin it. It is literally not pinning it, but it is like a pinning it. You pin that on the board. So at one place, you get all the resources available on all, we cannot say all, there are thousands of resources. The resources which you have created, which you want to put together for your use, they are available there on Pinterest. As we said, there are many other tools. Some of them are like delicious. Delicious is a tool which can be used for sharing for discovering the best of the web. Resources are there, but you can find out and use them profitably or effectively. Like Pinterest, there is one more tool which is called Scoop It. This is used for topic centric media creation. You can create, you can put them, as you can see here, now there are at least four to five such things which are scooped. This is kind of a publishing. You assemble them and publish them on this site. Again, as we have seen in Pinterest, you will have similar type of topic centric media resources available at one point of time. For researcher, another tool is mainly 
you can use it for collecting your resources, organizing your resources or even sharing the resources. Researcher is interested in finding out what is happening in the area because reviewing of research, reviewing of literature is one important step in planning, creating a framework for the researcher's own research. This tool will help you to collate, to organize as well as to share your ideas with other researchers. Another area where researcher is concerned or feels challenged is citing or giving references or creating a bibliography. A site you like helps you to organize your references in a sequential manner, in a proper manner and basically organizing things takes a lot of our time. So this, these sites, these tools like site you like would help you a lot. That saves your time, the unnecessary time, but that time can be profitably used for other purposes. There are many such tools available to a teacher, to a learner, to a trainer, to a researcher. We have to explore them and there are tools which are specific to different areas. For example, there would be special tools for law, there will be special tools for medicine, for education, for physics. So to explore them and see that whether they are relevant to our purpose, you select and start using them. Start sharing those with your friends and colleagues. That would enhance the whole process of learning because lot of learning resources can be created, generated and also can be shared in time.